This is a booster cookie, and I'm about to break Minecraft's biggest server by spending over $10,000 on them. You see, over the last three years, I've spent nearly 3,000 hours playing on a server that you might have heard of before called Hypixel Skyblock. And during those 3,000 hours, I've been playing the server's hardest game mode, known as Iron Man, which forces you to grind for everything entirely by yourself which has led to me doing some pretty insane things such as spending over a thousand hours grinding for this stick. But today, I've officially had enough of all of that and it's time to see what life is like on the other side. So I'm gonna be restarting completely from scratch and attempting to become as overpowered as possible in as little time as possible by abusing pay to win to the absolute maximum. And so the first thing I did was purchase a brand new Minecraft account because of course I did not want this absolutely shameful behavior to be associated with my main. And I spent quite a bit of time trying to come up with a name that no one would ever be able to guess was me before eventually landing on this masterpiece. But with everything now set up on this new account, I logged into Skyblock, created a brand new profile, and headed over to the hub to begin paying to win. Unfortunately, it turns out that the game literally doesn't give you access to pay to win until you have at least least five hours of playtime. So I went back to my island and started trying to set up a simple AFK pool that I could just spend the rest of the night in. We got it, W. Wait, what? You need a slab? Oh, and the slab goes right there, right? Yeah, this is right, we're good, we're good, we got it. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> this is so scuffed. <gasps> this is so scuffed. Oh no, we got it, we got it, we got it, right? All right, now we leave this for the next, uh, we leave this for the next five hours. So after spending the night AFK on my island, I made my way back to the hub in the morning to check if my little strategy had worked. All right, I actually didn't check yesterday, but I think I should have been AFK for five hours. So let's hope this works. Oh, all right, we're in, baby, we're in, we're in. Wait, where do you, I don't even know, I've never bought a cookie from here in my life. And this is where those booster cookies that I mentioned before come into play. Because you see, on the Hypixel store, there's no option to directly buy coins or items. Instead, you're only able to buy something called gems. And with these gems, the main item that you're able to buy is the booster cookie, which when consumed will give you a bunch of cool abilities for the next four days, which is nice and all, but how exactly am I gonna use those to pay to win? Well, if I come over here to this man named the Bazaar, you'll be able to see that booster cookies can actually be sold to other players. So while I may not be able to directly buy coins from Hypixel themselves, I can essentially just use the Bazaar here as a middleman to accomplish the same goal, which actually leads into my next problem. Because in order to actually actually unlock the ability to use the bazaar, I would first have to hit level 7 in farming, foraging, and mining. What do I- wh wait, what are you supposed to farm with initially? Okay, rookie hoe? Uh, I need 10 coins. Wait, how do I get- how do I get 10 coins? <laughs> oh my god, being poor is so weird. Thankfully, 10 coins isn't too hard to come by, and I was able to just farm wheat for a couple of seconds, sell it to the farm merchant, and buy myself a rookie hoe. And then with that rookie hoe, I just had to farm for a couple of minutes, and boom, just like that, farming level 7 was acquired. Then to get my mining level up, I enchanted a very basic golden shovel and just mined a ton of sand. And then finally, to get my foraging level up, I was able to purchase a jungle axe off of the auction house for only 480 coins and then use that to quickly farm the oak trees in the hub. And now that I had access to the bazaar, it was time to start buying and selling some cookies. And even though this was literally still in the first hour of the profile, I wasn't messing around because like I said at the beginning of this video, we're trying to progress as fast as possible. So I opened up the Hypixel store, purchased myself $500 worth of gems, and started selling some cookies. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, wait, wait, we see this goes down. 60, I'm getting 67 million per 12 right now. Will this crash the price? How strong is the cookie economy? It's holding up. Wait, the cookie economy is strong, man. It's literally not dropping at all, 67 mil. Despite my excitement at the cookie economy holding strong though, it didn't take too long for me to run into my next issue. You may only purchase 192 cookies per day. Wait, I literally maxed out cookies. I literally can't buy any more cookies. Thankfully, I still managed to come away with a total of 500 million coins, which was pretty good considering that would usually take your average profile literally hundreds of hours to accumulate. Obviously though, just having a bunch of coins was wasn't the goal of my challenge. So I made my way over to the auction house to start purchasing some gear. And this is where the challenge starts to get very interesting. 
because this wasn't going to be as simple as just buying the best possible item that I could afford. Since the vast majority of Skyblock items have either some sort of level or challenge requirement in order to use them. And obviously, since this was a completely new profile, I wasn't going to be meeting many of these requirements. So I would need to strategically purchase items that had no requirements while also still being at least decent in the stats department. After quite a bit of research though, I managed to come away with a setup that was surprisingly decent, consisting of all three pieces of the elegant tuxedo, a werewolf helmet, and most notably, the emerald blade which was the perfect weapon for my situation since the damage it does is based on how many coins you have. And when I went to do a damage test with all this new stuff, I was able to do about 60,000 damage a hit, which wasn't too bad for someone who had just hit combat level 1. But I knew that I could still get this number up a lot higher, so I decided to invest about 200 million coins into some accessories, which are items that give you an increasingly better stat boost as they go up in rarity. Unfortunately, as it turns out, these also have a skill requirement. Requires combat 35! Everything's minimum combat 15, okay. We, we need to get combat level then. And usually at this stage of the game, a player's options for grinding combat level would be extremely limited. But since my setup was so far superior to the average early game player, I was actually able to kill all the way up to the third tier zombie slayer boss, which got me all the way up to combat level 12 in only about 20 minutes. Now, keep in mind, the leveling system on Hypixel is exponential. So the higher you get in level, the more XP it requires to get to the next one. But I only needed to hit combat level 15 before I would unlock the ability to use a bunch of new items and go to a bunch of new areas in the game, so I had already made some significant progress for just my first day. And on day two, I took things to the next level when I dropped another $300 on gems and maxed out booster cookies for the second day in a row. Why did I need all these coins though? Well, it turns out that Skyblock pets don't have any requirements. So I was about to buy the Ender Dragon pet, the second best damage pet in the entire game. You want me to do a test with the Emblade before I buy it? 112k, okay, that's what we're doing with the M-Blade with 645 mil, okay? I'm telling you, like, the coins actually don't make as big a difference as we thought. I, when I only had, like, 100 mil left, we were still doing, like, fine damage. Alright, I'm buying it. Screw it. Doesn't have a tier boost on it, right? Screw it! There it is! Minus 580 million coins! So, in terms of IRL dollars, just this one thing right here was about 464 US dollars. Now the question is if when we switch to Ender Dragon, will our damage have been more than before? Um, okay. So, we actually were doing more damage with, with just the coins than with the Ender Dragon itself. <laughs> So obviously the Ender Dragon turned out to not be my greatest investment, but hopefully it would prove itself more useful later down the line. In the meantime though, I shifted my focus to hitting combat level 15, which would unlock access to dungeons for me, and in turn allow me to start progressing towards the main goal of this challenge. You see, since Hypixel Skyblock is basically a never-ending RPG, I kinda had to set the end goal for myself somewhere, otherwise I would just be wasting money forever. So, in order to complete this challenge, I would need to solo all seven of the dungeon floors as well as the highest tier of each of the five Slayer bosses. But make no mistake, this was not going to be easy. Because not only are those things I haven't even done on my 3000 hour profile yet, but dungeons in particular was literally designed to be played with a team of five people. So I had quite the tall task in front of me, but first I needed to actually be able to get into dungeons. So I finished up the grind to combat 15, made a couple Couple small changes to my gear and then hopped into my first ever solo dungeon run. We're giving it a shot. <laughs> Three fourths tux, a tarantula helmet, and a flower of truth. But we do have the e drag pet. What wait, what class do I play? What class do I play? What's my best bet? Berserker? Okay, I'll go Berserker then. I think I clicked tank at the end. No, we're at, we're at Berserker. Okay. Yep, I took one step into the dungeon and immediately died, so obviously we needed to make some changes. Thankfully though, now that I had gotten my combat level up a bit, I had access to a ton of new gear. So I purchased another $100 worth of cookies to get my coins up a little bit, and then upgraded to a set of three strong dragon pieces and the tarantula helmet. And then I hopped into another dungeon run to see if this new setup would solve my problems. Also, quick side note, at the very beginning of my run sometimes, you might see another person in there. That 
that's just because the game literally won't let you start the run without at least one other person in the party. But don't worry, I always had the other player either leave or die as soon as the run starts. All right, we got this. We got this. If I get one shot immediately, you guys. Oh, sweet. So far, so good, maybe. So far, so good. We're not doing too much damage, but I didn't take too much damage there either. Honestly, the damage isn't terrible to like... To these mobs, we're doing like 100k for being literally cat of zero. I feel like that's not that bad. You're also using an ender dragon pet. True. I do have a legendary ender dragon pet that might be uh, might be boosting things in my favor a small amount. Okay, we're on blood already. We're on blood. Oh, wait. Wait, this is not free. <laughs> wait, wait. The right click on the FOT is so OP. I can literally just train him. My damage is so low. Okay, last one. Boom. We got it. We got it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Entrance completed. Hey. It's a C, but we passed. It counts, baby. That counts. And just like that, my first solo dungeon run of the challenge had been completed. Except not really, because that was only the entrance floor of dungeons, which is basically just a warm up to the actual thing. But now that I had completed it, I could start doing the actual dungeon floor. So I entered floor one. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Let's see how this goes. Okay, remember, it's just completion. We don't need like any particular score, or whatever. It's just a matter of completing it. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay, this is a, this is a first mini boss, I think, right? This will be the first test here. Oh, we got this. We got this. We got this. Oh, nah, doubters, you're in trouble. I think we've got this. I think we've got this. That was a little bit too easy. <laughs> and the rest of the main clear phase went just as smoothly. So now all that was left was the floor one boss, Bonzo. Okay, come on. It is going to be a lot of HP for me to work through maybe though. Oh no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Castle of Stone there. Let's go! Let's go, floor one done, we did it baby. Too easy, all right. Entrance and floor one, we actually just like wiped through those. And now I had officially completed the first part of my challenge. And with how well that first floor had gone, I decided to just hop straight into a floor two as well and see what happens. And similarly to floor one, the main clear phase of the dungeon run went extremely well. So it would just come down to if I could successfully do this boss fight on my first try. But the floor two boss fight was going to be a big step up in difficulty. Oh no, oh no. Okay, I got priest, I got priest, I got priest. Warrior's dead, warrior's dead. Oh no, oh no. Okay, that guy's dead. Oh no. I don't have enough damage. Oh no, oh no. No, oh my god. Oh my god. So the first floor two attempt was a failure, but I was mostly encouraged because I had gotten way closer to beating it than I thought I would. And while looking into gear upgrades the next day, I found out that one of the best mage weapons in the game, the Midas Staff, somehow didn't have a requirement. So I purchased another $200 worth of cookies and went all in on getting an awesome mage setup consisting of three pieces of wise dragon armor, dark goggles, and of course, the Midas staff. And then it was time to give this floor two boss fight another try. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh no. The priest, the priest, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, yeah. Definitely take a lot more damage with this. We have to watch the damage we take. I think we got, I think we got, I think we got, I think we got it. I'm keeping my distance. We got him, we got him, we got him. Come on. Woo -hoo. Come on. I'm like out of mana. I'm out of mana. One more. One more hit. Hey, there it is. There it is. Let's go. That is floor two completed, baby. Hey, and I got an S rank. So I had now completed the first two goals of my challenge and things were seemingly going great. Maybe actually too great because the next day I ran into a very big problem. You see, I had started to hear rumors that the server just wouldn't let you spend more than $1,500 a month on their store. And I was already at $1,100 spent after only four days. So if that was true, it was going to be a massive problem. And so since that issue seemed the most urgent, I decided to investigate it first the only way I knew how, by spending $800 on gems to see if I would hit 
the limit. It's not stopping me, guys. Guys, this limit does not exist. Did I just get baited into spending $800? Nope, there it is. Okay, so if we re-log again, there you go, 131,000 Skyblock gems. So yeah, the limit just didn't exist and I got baited into spending 800 bucks. On the bright side though, I was once again able to sell the full daily limit of 192 cookies and get a massive purse stacked up of over 500 million coins. Which meant that for the first time, I could do a damage test with both the massive purse and my ender dragon pet. Oh, wait, that's not, that's way, that's better than I thought. 208k? 208k, that is not bad. But then it was time to shift my focus back to the main challenge. So I spent some of the coins on upgrading my setup, including buying some new accessories, as well as some utility items for dungeons. And then I began my first attempt at a solo floor three dungeon. And to my surprise, the clear phase of the dungeon once again went really smoothly. So it was just gonna come down to how I did in the boss fight. Okay, come on. Okay. I'm out of mana already. I'm out of mana already. Oh, no. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, yikes. I'm getting farmed in the corner. I'm getting farmed in the corner. Yeah, the fight didn't go great. Partially because I had just totally forgotten the mechanics of how it worked, but also because my current gear probably just wasn't good enough. And after consulting with some of my viewers, we decided that my best option would be to switch to the Archer class because to put it simply, it's just broken. But in order to get the most use out of the Archer class, I was gonna want a Juju Shortbow. To be able to use the Juju Shortbow though, I would need to hit Enderman Slayer level three. But before I could even begin to do Enderman Slayer, I first had to kill a tier four Wolf Slayer boss. Thankfully, the tier four Wolf boss actually happens to be pretty easy. So that wasn't too bad. Hey, we got it, we got it. That was easy. And that actually Actually marks another goal complete for our challenge. Anyways though, now it was time to start working towards Enderman Slayer level 3. Unlike Wolf Slayer though, Enderman Slayer is extremely difficult and even the tier 2 boss will do some heavy damage. But I thought I might be able to take one down if I utilized my mage setup and just tried to keep my distance from the thing so it didn't even get a chance to hit me. Okay, do the hits phase. Do the hits phase for me. Okay, wait, this is actually working. Oh my god, it's- wait, we're actually there! Oh, lag? Oh wait. Oh, that was close. That was close. I, I forgot about the beacons. I forgot about the beacons. I don't have a- Hey! Let's go! And now that I could kill tier 2 Enderman, it only took about another 20 minutes to hit Enderman Slayer level 3. Okay, we gotta turn it in. This should be the one though. E-Man 3. Hey, there we go. Enderman Slayer 3. So we collect this now and we should now be able to go buy a Jujubo. 51.3 mil. Boom. There it is, we purchased it. Before I could use my new overpowered archer setup though, I had another massive problem that I needed to deal with. Because in only a couple of hours, Derpy was gonna be elected as the mayor of Skyblock, and one of his perks would shut down the auction house for the entire five days that he was in office, which basically meant that I wouldn't be able to buy any new upgrades for my setup during that time. So in order to prepare, I used the leftover gems I had from my purchase of $800 the day before and maxed out cookies again, which got me up to over 800 million coins. And so of course, I had to do another damage test with my Emerald Blade. Okay, let's see now. Come on, 300k? 296, oh my god, we are so close. We are right on the door of 300k. I just, 297, I just wanna hit 300k. We're so close, that's crazy. Nearly 300,000 damage on a profile that I think probably has like less than 10 hours of playtime if you don't include the five hours of AFK I did at the very beginning of it. But then I went on a massive buying spree, spending nearly half a billion coins just trying to buy anything that I might want over those next five days, including new armor sets, weapons, pretty much anything you could think of. And once I felt like I was fully prepped for the incoming derpy apocalypse, I took my brand new archer setup and gave floor three another shot. All right, here we go. Get him low and then kill. Get him low and then kill. I'm ready to go. We got it this time. Okay. Okay. Oh, I killed on accident. I gotta go. I gotta go fast now. I did way too much damage. Come on, I can't reach it. Are we good? I, I got. It, I got. It, I got. It, I got. It, I got it. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, now just professor. Come on. Oh 
We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. He's done. He's done. We get him? Is he dead? Is he bugged out? Go mid. Will he come back? Are you kidding me? I broke it. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, may wait, wait. Maybe, maybe if we pull out the mage gear. Oh, it's hitting him. It's hitting him. We're getting him. We're getting him. We're getting him. <laughs> Almost. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, now focus him again. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Not now. Don't choke now. Don't choke now. I got it, right? That's it? Oh, my God. We did it. We did it. Shockingly, despite me managing to completely bug out the boss fight, I was able to successfully solo floor three and complete another goal of the challenge. And the next day marked day number one of the auction house lockdown. So I literally spent the entire day just grinding out Zombie Slayer until I was able to hit combat level 24, which would now allow me to use the Frozen Blaze armor set that I had purchased the day before. And when used in combination with a Blaze pet, this armor set actually is one of the best in the entire game. So to have it on only day eight of my profile was actually insane. And then on day nine, I spent some time trying to max out this armor set to the best of my ability since I assumed I'd be using it for quite some time. And once I was happy with it, I jumped into my first ever solo floor four attempt to see if this setup was worth the hype. Now, what are the odds I walk into this room right now and immediately get one shot? Hopefully not. Let's see. Oh no, we're good. Oh my god! Oh my god! Wait! Wait, this is not bad at all! Oh my god, 1.5 mil damage? Wait, that, that seems really good to me. And as you can probably imagine with this OP setup, the rest of the clear phase went flawlessly, and once again, it all came down to the boss fight. Hopefully this goes well. Okay. So is any one of these spots in the stands good? Like, is a decoy here fine? I'm trusting you. It's down. Okay, now I stay up in the stands here and shoot down on them, right? Now, how do I get an angle where I can hit them, though? Oh, spirit chicken. I gotta watch out for these because these will insta-kill me, right? I forget how I know when... Dude, it's been so long since I've done a floor four. I don't even remember how I know when the bear spawns in. Oh, it's because these lights go all around, right? The bear should be here, right? Oh, there he is. Do I want to go down to him? We're actually not doing too bad down here. Let me out, let me out. What? Did it hit? It hit one of the mobs. Oh my god. Yeah, I hit a cow. I hit a cow. Okay, where is it at? Okay. There we go. Hit number one. Hit number one. Three to go. Three to go. Wait, I'm actually good down here. Boom. There we go. Number two. Halfway there. Halfway there. Okay, we got it. We got it. What? What was that? That was actually a scam. Please no troll. Please no troll. Thank God. Okay, last one. Holy. One more. One more. Go for trick shot. Absolutely not. We've been here for 40 minutes. Okay, here's the bow. Okay, come on. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Only took 38 minutes and 19 seconds, but the solo floor four has been completed. Definitely took a bit longer than I had expected, but nonetheless, that was officially another goal completed for our challenge. Before I could attempt a solo floor five though, I would first need to hit catacombs level 14. So I was gonna have to run some more of these floor fours. Fortunately though, it's only my first run of each dungeon floor that has to be solo. So now I could go back and run these with a party, which would make the whole process a lot faster. First though, I noticed that the price of booster cookies had increased by a lot. So in order to try and capitalize on this, I purchased and sold another hundred dollars worth of them. Then I ran those floor four dungeons until I had gotten my cattle level up high enough. And now it was time to attempt my first solo floor five let's get started baby let's get started oh 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 that is some damage wait aside from the mob seemingly taking a small step up in the damage department though the main clear went pretty good as it usually does and so of course it was time to see how i would fare in the boss fight let's do it baby okay head to the middle here head to the middle here we go they're spawning in all right let's see. okay we can see the correct livid here Oh, wait, this is this is pretty big damage here. Wait, this is a lot of damage. Oh, oh, oh. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. We don't have enough we don't have enough health. 
We do not have enough health for this. Oh, this one's gonna be tough. I did notice that I had gotten the boss down to about half of its HP, so I came to the conclusion that damage wasn't my problem and I just needed to focus on getting some more healing. So the next day I did exactly that and worked on getting a ton of new healing items that would hopefully put me over the edge for this floor 5 boss fight. And in the process I also happened to kill the highest tier of spider slayer boss which similar to the wolf slayer one isn't really that difficult. But nevertheless that is another goal complete for our challenge. Before making another attempt at the solo floor 5 though I actually first purchased and sold another $400 worth of booster cookies because I had a pretty insane experiment I was going to start working on the next day. But now with my purse looking very healthy once again, it was time to reattempt this solo floor 5 and see if these healing items would be enough to put me over the edge. All right, it's time, it's time. Okay, where's the one I'm looking for? There he is, there he is. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Ow, ow, ow. Ah! Okay, I think I, got, I think I should have the right one on now. We got this, we got this, we got this. He's so low, he's so low. I should have still have one Bonzo pump. There's the last Bonzo pop, come on. We got him, 500k, 500k. Where's he at, where's he at? He's back deep. He's going all over. Wait, how do I get him? I can't hit him. He's so low, he's so low. We got him, we got him, we got him. Let's go. Let's go, we got it. Let's go. That was a little bit, I honestly thought all this extra regen was gonna make that super easy. That was still a little bit harder than I expected it to be. Yet another goal for the challenge complete, leaving me with only two more dungeon floors and three more slayer bosses to solo. But from this point forward, there were no more easy goals to check off. Everything I had left would be extremely difficult to beat. At the start of day 12 though, I decided to take the pay to win on this account to a whole other level when I began the minion experiment. You see, earlier this year, a new minion had been added to Skyblock known as the Inferno Minion. And if I were to tell you that these things were insanely expensive, that would be a massive understatement. In fact, these minions cost so much money that on my 3000 hour account where I have to grind for everything myself, there's a pretty good chance that I will never get to use these things. Which is why I thought it would be a great idea to use this pay to win account as an opportunity to use them for a week. But you might be wondering exactly how expensive are these things though? Well, just to purchase five low tier ones, it cost me over 600 million coins. But it doesn't end there. Because then, in order to give them a chance to produce the actual good drops that can be worth money, you have to buy fuel for them that costs an additional 200 million coins a day. So this 7 day experiment was going to cost me around 2 billion coins to conduct. But if the minions managed to produce some of the rare drops I was looking for, believe it or not, it could actually end up being profitable. But just getting these things set up was already draining my purse, so I invested another $400 into cookies to get my money back up. Unfortunately, day one of the experiment was pretty tragic with me only getting one single decent drop from the minions that was worth about 25 million coins. But I was still holding out hope that the upcoming six days might be a little bit better. In the meantime though, I returned my focus to dungeons because before I attempted my first solo floor six, I wanted to grind up to Cata level 20 because I knew this wasn't gonna be easy, so I needed every little advantage I could get. Now that I could run floor fives with the party though, it went super fast and within an hour, I already had all the XP that I needed. Before starting up the solo run though, I decided to purchase the Diamond Floor 6 head, which while expensive at a whopping 200 million coins, could end up proving vital to my completion because this thing would give me a huge stats boost. But purchasing it did totally break my bank once again, so I bought another $400 worth of cookies because I still needed to keep those minions fueled for another six days. With all of that now sorted though, I hopped into my solo Floor 6 run, cleared through the main main stage of the dungeon run with ease and then entered into the boss room well i'll switch to i'll switch to diamond head after terrors are in it, now do, do i want to be in hallway or where do i want to be don't go mid uh-oh okay light i'm trying to life still here 
Portal, portal, portal. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, oh no. I'm just gonna spam for the lifesteal. I'm just going for the lifesteal. I'm just going for lifesteal. Come on! Come on! Now they're gonna come back alive, right? Come on! Come on! Oh, let's go! Do I stay in portal? Do I stay in portal? Or do I get out of here? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Move around, move around. Okay, okay. One of them's low. One of them's low. Oh, no, 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 no. They're all four still alive. Wait, there's one. There's first one. Jolly Pink Giant is really low. I can kill this right now. I can kill this right now. There we go. Two down, two down. Bigfoot still has a bunch of HP, but now it's just a 1v1. Don't do golems. Don't do golems. Okay, okay. No golems. No golems. No golems. Okay. <sighs> all right, all right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Did I hit a golem? No, we're good. We're good. Halfway, ha oh my god, that's big damage, though. that's big damage. Whatever move he's using right there, it does do huge damage to us. Come on! I think I got it, I think I got it, I think I got it. I'm going in for it. <gasps> Let's go! Let's go! Only took 35 minutes and 10 seconds, but first attempt. Hey, don't ever doubt me again, baby. That's what I said. <gasps> Let's go. Oh my god. Let's go. Yeah, honestly, I still can't believe I somehow managed to do that on my first try, but I did it. And with that goal now complete, I only had one more dungeon floor that I needed to solo. But on day 14, I actually decided to take a little bit of a break from all the dungeon stuff and see if I could maybe take down the higher tier Enderman Slayers. So I dropped another $300 on cookies, bought myself a bunch of new gear, and gave a tier 3 a shot for the first time. Okay, that spawned it. That spawned it. Oh my god. Okay, it's a lot of damage. Okay, wait. I'm literally gonna get two shot by this thing. I'm gonna be in, I'm in so much trouble. I'm in, there's just, yeah, there was just no way. And with how poorly that went, I was basically ready to just throw in the towel there. But then one of my viewers gave me a tip that there was something called an admin soul that you could purchase off of the auction house and use a special technique to summon that could potentially be capable of just doing the bosses for you. And this sounded way too good to be true, but I figured it was worth the shot anyway, so I bought one and summoned it in. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it! I got it, I got it, I got it! Let's go! How much damage does Hypixel do? I wanna see if Hypixel can still- Oh my god. Wait, Hypixel does do some crazy. Wait, it's doing like 800k a hit! Holy, this soul is actually a Giga Chad. My god. Okay. Now, Goblin, Wither Cloak. Alright, let's see Hypixel go to work. Let's see Hypixel go to work, baby! <laughs> it's working, though. It's working. Is this literally all I have to do? Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, this thing is actually so- this thing is so broken. Look at him go, it's- uh, he did it! Oh my god. Actual Chad. Oh my god, what a Chad. So yes, the Hypixel Admin Soul was capable of killing the tier 3 boss entirely by itself while I just sat back and watched. But now the real question was, would it work for the tier 4? Okay, there we go, there we go, it's aggroed on him. It took me way too long to get aggroed on it. Okay, come on. Now I have to actually focus on staying alive. Wait, it's actually doing pretty good damage on it. Okay, laser phase. I feel like this should be easier in third person. Where are they at? Okay. H down to 150 mil with three, with three minutes left. Down to 100. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Woo, woo, woo. Down to 80 mil with two minutes to go. Pretty good pace, pretty good pace. You got this, Hypixel Advent Soul. Come on. Gotta watch for this beacon. He's gonna throw it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, my remnants are popping. I, I don't, I can't see these heads. I can't see these heads. Oh god. My remnants are popping like crazy. I'm messing this phase up. I don't know how this phase works. I don't know how this phase works. I don't understand this. I don't understand the heads. I don't understand the heads. It killed it! It killed it! It killed it! Oh my god, it got it! It got it! And to really put into perspective just how game-breaking that was, a couple of days later, 
the admins patched it. But hey, it still counts. So that was another goal completed for our challenge. I actually ended up deciding to continue doing Enderman Slayer anyways, though, because if I could get up to level seven, I would unlock the ability to use the Terminator, which was basically just like the Juju Shorpo I was already using, but on steroids. But now that the summoning method had been patched by the admins, I needed to figure out a new way to kill tier fours. So over the next few days, I invested a ton of time and a ridiculous amount of money into getting a Gigamax setup for Enderman. Slayer. It did actually kind of end up paying off though because I was eventually able to solo tier fours with it. But at that point, I also realized that grinding to Enderman Slayer level seven was just going to take way too long. And so I instead opted to make a bunch of ridiculously maxed Juju Shorpos that were just way overkill, spending about half a billion coins in the process. And keep in mind, I was still paying that 200 million coins a day to keep those Inferno minions fueled at this point. So just over the course of these four days, I I had to drop another $1,400 on cookies, which might have you thinking again, hey, whatever happened to the Inferno Minion experiment? Like, how did that turn out? Well, to put it simply, terrible. I did get a couple of rare drops from them over the course of the week, but in total, I think I easily lost like 600 or 700 million coins on the fuel alone. So yeah, definitely not my best decision, but hey, I guess I made the mistake so you guys don't have to. On the bright side though, on day 19, a very interesting opportunity presented itself. Because for the first time during this challenge, a fire sale for an exclusive cosmetic skin had begun. And the reason that this was a big opportunity is because these skins can usually be sold for a very high premium on the auction house, meaning that I could get way more coins out of my IRL money than I usually would by just buying and selling cookies. Now, on the flip side of things though, if the price of the skin ended up crashing over the next few days before I was able to sell all the ones I purchased, it could actually end up being worse than just buying cookies. But that was a risk that I was willing to take, so I went big and invested $600 into purchasing 69 of these RGB skins. And then I sold off a couple of them immediately just to make sure I would at least get some coins out of this investment. But for the rest of them, I was planning to hold on until I really needed the coins. At this point though, I felt like I was finally ready to return to dungeons and attempt my first ever solo floor seven. And so naturally there was a massive dungeons bug that started completely wiping people's inventories and the admins just shut the whole thing down. So I needed to find some stuff to keep me occupied for the next couple of days. And the first thing I decided to do was grind up to Wolf Slayer level seven, which would unlock the Plasma Flux Power Orb. And this thing did have quite the hefty price tag at about 300 million coins, but I sold off some more of those RGB skins and bought one because it provides a massive regen buff, which for the last couple of goals in this challenge was almost gonna be a necessity. And next up, now that I had this Plasma Flux, I was feeling a bit more confident in my setup. So I decided to take on a tier five Revenant Horror, which is the highest tier of Zombie Slayer. And to my surprise, I actually took down the thing with almost no struggle at all. So I guess I had just overestimated the difficulty of this boss a little bit, but anyways, that was another goal completed for our challenge, leaving me with only one more dungeon and one more Slayer to complete. But in order to attempt Blaze Slayer, I needed an item that required a floor seven completion. But I also couldn't attempt a floor seven because dungeons were still closed due to that wipe. So instead, I just spent the next day grinding tier five zombie Slayers until I hit zombie level eight. And that allowed me to purchase the Warden Helmet, which is basically the best damage helmet in the entire game. So that was going to be crucial for Blaze Slayer later on. All of these expensive purchases though did end up requiring a lot of coins, so I had to sell off the rest of my RGB stock, but the price of the skin actually ended up not moving that much, so I got pretty good value out of them. And then finally, on day 24, dungeons officially reopened and I could now attempt my first solo floor seven. But soloing floor seven was not going to be anywhere near as simple as the previous floors. Because unlike those ones, floor seven's boss fight has four separate phases and each of them are literally designed to be impossible to solo. The first is the crystal phase, where you must first collect both the end crystals in order to stun the boss. And usually, one person tanks the hits from the boss, while the other collects the crystals by using special items to bounce up to them. But again, I was doing this solo, so I had to try and collect those crystals while being constantly attacked by the wither boss. Let me, let me try the Jerry Sheen, let me try the Jerry Sheen. Oh wait, wait, that was gonna work, that was gonna work, we had just enough mana. That was actually gonna work. Let's try, let's try. Ah, oh, we're right there. It, it literally is going to use all my mana, but we're right there. Okay, come on. 
Come on, Wither Cloak, come on, let me up there. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. The first attempt wasn't great, but after a few more tries, I realized there was a brief moment during one of the boss's abilities where I could get to the crystals without being constantly hit by him. And at that point, I started to get the hang of it. Okay, let's give it a try. Oh, wait, wow. Okay, he's going into that one mode a lot. Uh oh, uh oh. Don't panic. We got it, we got it, we got it. Okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it, got it. I need to get him into this thing. Oh no, I'm getting melted. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Bonzo mask, Bonzo mask. Okay, Bonzo mask through that one. We're good, we're good. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I got him, I got him, I got him. And now I was on to phase two. And in this phase, you have to crush the boss twice by having one player lure the boss under the pillar while the other stands on the pad and crushes it. But there was only one of me, so how exactly was I gonna do that? Well, apparently there's a brief one second period where after the pillar stops moving, the boss can still be crushed by running into it. So I would have to stand on the pad and lower the pillar and then at the exact right moment, rush back to the pillar and lure the boss into it. Having pixel perfect movement though is a lot easier said than done. And I failed for hours and hours on end before I finally started to get the hang of it. Come on. There we go, baby. There we go, baby. Did I get- I got him! I got him! I got him! Okay, 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 baby. Now it was on to phase three, and this one was gonna make the previous two look like a cakewalk. Because in this phase, I would have to navigate through four separate rooms filled with devices known as terminals. And each of these terminals requires you to solve what is essentially a mini puzzle. But the whole time you're doing this, you're being chased by the wither boss, and if it catches up to you, you basically insta-die. Oh, and did I mention that the thing moves so fast that even with pixel-perfect gameplay, it is almost impossible to complete all of these by yourself. So the only way I could even give myself a chance to complete this phase would be to repeatedly shoot the boss in between terminals while using the spider pet, which has an ability to slow down monsters by 40%. When I say that this phase is nearly impossible to solo though, I really mean it. I ran attempts of floor 7s for hours and hours, for days on end, only to fail at this phase each and every single time. But finally on day 30, I had a decent attempt. Okay, and nice bounce. Okay. Okay, please no melody. Thank you. Stun some more. Whoops. Oh my god, I'm choking on this again. Oh my god. Okay, I need... I'm gonna stun a whole bunch right here. Okay, come on, Rage. I had just barely survived and made it through to phase four. But this one was simple. Do enough damage to kill the boss before it kills you. Okay.
Come on, baby. This is it. Come on. Come on. Like a week worth of waiting. We got this. This is it. This is it. I'm popping abilities. So close. So close. What is this? Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. He's dead. He's dead. That's it. It's over. It's over. It's over. That's it. We did it. After a full week of spending hours each and every day running solo floor sevens, just trying to complete it, I had finally done it. And now I was down to the final goal of this challenge. But while that battle had ended, another one raged on. You see, I'm currently at war to become the most subscribed train on YouTube. But at the moment, I am getting brutally beat down by the band known as Train. Most famous for their extremely mid-2009 song, Hey Soul Sister. So if you enjoy these videos, please help me out by checking if you're subscribed. Anyways, over the course of the week that those Floor 7 runs took place, I spent a lot of money. And I mean like really a lot because I spent $2,700 in total, which is crazy on its own, but the even crazier part is all that money was really just for two main items. The first was the Hyperion, which cost me over 1.2 billion coins to purchase, which is roughly equivalent to $1,000 IRL. But the reason I was willing to pay so much for this weapon is because its right-click ability was going to be crucial for Blaze Slayer. Because when you use it, it gives you a temporary shield that greatly reduces the damage you take. And the second big purchase I made was on day 32 for the Golden Dragon Pet. Which, if you watched my previous video, you'll already know that this thing is worth a little over 2 billion coins. But once again, it should be well worth the price tag, because the Golden Dragon is by far the best damage pet in the game, and would help me a lot in taking down the higher tier Blaze Slayer. And so, with all of this new OP gear, I started to work on rising through the ranks of Blaze Slayer. And surprisingly, within just two days, I was already able to kill the tier 3 Blaze boss, which left me with only one more tier to conquer. But the tier 4 blaze boss was going to be extremely difficult. Because while the tier 3's passive does 20% of your max health every second, the tier 4's passive does 50% of your max health every second. So unless your gear is insanely good and you have a lot of healing, that thing just melts you. But thankfully, I had the magic ability of pay to win. So a couple days of grinding and $1,900 spent later, I had acquired pretty much the best possible Blaze Slayer setup I could have at this stage in the game. But a lot of my skills and stats were still pretty low considering the profile was literally just a month old. So there was a chance that even this insane setup I had bought still wouldn't be enough. But there was only one way to find out. All right, I believe this mini boss here is going to spawn it in. I have no idea if I'm ready for this thing or not at all, but we are about to find out, baby. All right, in the first phase here, so far, damage I'm taking seems reasonable. Damage I'm doing seems pretty solid as well. I think we've already done like 50 mil damage to it, so that's a good start for sure there. Now I'm going to do my normal of going up on here. So I should be coming out of this phase here with about three minutes left on the fight, which seems decent. Here we go, the boss is already below 100 mil HP. I'm really most worried about that third phase and the amount of damage we take into that. Obviously, we have the pillars here to watch out for as well. One second, have to wither cloak through that. We've already got this thing down to half. Okay, wait, I'm starting to see the damage come in though. I'm starting to actually take damage from this thing. We're in the third phase though here already, wow. But yeah, just over two minutes left on the timer here, which I think means we're more than good on that. It's just gonna come down to if I can do the damage. Okay, I need to switch to these here. Get a new Plasma Flux down. All right, and be ready to go. Here we go. Okay, we're in this phase here. Final phase. Can I do it first try? That would be actually insane. Would be literally insane to do it first try here. Okay, Fire Pits. We want to stay away from that. Okay, we have a Pillar here. Pillar here. Wither Cloak through it. Okay, it's in Fire Pits. Stay away from that. Okay, Spirit Mode. Spirit Mode. Make sure I'm still using the Sill and Okay, Fire Pits again. Stay back. Oh my god, I'm so nervous here. Okay, we have plenty of time. It's just a matter about being safe with the healing. Okay, fire pit. Now do that. Okay. 
Oh, it went up. It went up. Hopefully, we have enough time left. I'm a little bit worried about the time. Okay, come on. I'm mainly worried about time here. I need to get another plasma flux down. Oh my god, we have it so low. We have it so low. Wait, it's so low. The thing is so low. Okay, wither cloak through that. Can I get up? I need a plasma flux down again. Okay, there we go. Oh no, I can't Scylla right now. I can't Scylla. Oh, we're gonna die. Wait. Oh my god. 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 Wait, it's right there. We have it. We have it. We have it. No! Oh my god, I was so close! I had literally gotten the boss down to its last 2% of HP and then died. But the good news was that it was very obvious that I could do this thing. So I spawned in another tier 4 blaze and entered the final phase. Alright, here we go. Third and final phase once again. Wait, no, the sorrow leggings! Okay, wait, I think we might have clutched up here. Get to the fire pillar. Okay, I don't know how I forgot the sorrow leggings almost died and still managed to come out of that like somewhat okay, it seems. But we did get to the fire pillar. Wait, it's literally 3 mil, 3 mil HP! Wait, am I crazy? Is it not that low? There we go! There we go! We did it! Let's go! Let's go! Tier 4 blaze down! Oh my god! Oh my god, wait, I shredded the HP so fast there at the end this time. Oh my god, we did it, you guys. <laughs> we did it, you guys. Let's go. And just like that, 36 days and a little over 120 hours of playtime later, I have officially completed every goal of this pay-to-win challenge. Funnily enough though, if there's one thing that I've learned after spending $10,000 on this stupid little block game, it's that as fun as it might seem to skip progression by paying thousands of dollars for a new OP sword, it can still never match that amazing feeling of finally grinding it for yourself. Because even though this sword right here is basically 100% equivalent to the one I have on my Iron Man account, it feels nowhere near as valuable to me as the one that I spent 2,000 hours grinding for. So maybe Maybe this game isn't actually all about the gear that we have, but rather about the journey we went through to get it. Or maybe my dopamine receptors are just fried from spending my life savings on some pixels. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you can click on the screen now to watch another one that you might like.